Hello, and welcome to another RPD video. Today, we'll be talking about jar relations in RPD. Mounting physical casts for RPD can be problematic. In order to understand why, we'll have to go back and remember some things. Centric relation is the position of the condyles when they're in the uppermost anteriormost position in the glenoid fossa. It's the position where the condyles articulate with the thinnest avascular portion of the respective discs. The position is independent of tooth contact and is restricted to a purely rotational movement about the transverse horizontal axis. Maximum intercuspation, or MI on the other hand, is the complete intercuspation of the opposing teeth independent of condylar positions. This is sometimes referred to as the best fit for the teeth regardless of condylar position. An occlusal stop is an occlusal contact between two opposing posterior teeth. Occlusal stops are important because they prevent the closure of the jaws indefinitely. As seen here on the left, the patient with occlusal stops is able to stop closing their jaws, while the patient on the right with no occlusal stops continues closing until the anterior teeth touches the gingiva. That also causes a change in the vertical dimension, or what we call the vertical height of the lower face. Vertical dimension of occlusion, or VDO, is the distance measured between any two points on the patient's face when the patient is in occlusion. If the patient were to lose their posterior teeth that provide occlusal stops, they would automatically lose vertical dimension. In RPD treatment, you'll find that you'll frequently be faced with situations where you're either going to have a low number of occlusal stops or no occlusal stops at all. As a general rule of thumb, whenever you have an occlusal contact, you're going to use an MI position as your final occlusal position. And if you have no occlusal stops, you'll revert to CR as your occlusal position. In this lecture, we'll give you a simplified example of how to mount cases in MI and CR. Mounting a case in MI is usually straightforward. However, if a patient has less than three occlusal stops, this becomes a problem. The reason is that when occlusal stops are less than three, the cast becomes unstable and finding an accurate mounting position is hard to achieve. Let's take this case for example. Here is one occlusal stop, and if we go around, we'll find that there aren't any more occlusal stops. If we try to bring those casts together by hand, we'll find that finding an accurate position is not possible as these casts tip over the one occlusal contact that exists. So how do we solve that issue? Record bases and occlusal rims are the solution to this problem. The occlusal rim is made out of base plate wax, and the record base is made out of self or light cured PMMA. They work by restoring the missing occlusal stops, therefore making it possible to mount a case with less than three occlusal stops. Record bases are made on the diagnostic cast, and then a wax rim is made on top of that. They are both taken to the patient's mouth, the wax rim is then adjusted so that it does not interfere with the patient's occlusal stops. A bite registration material is used and the patient is instructed to bite down. After the bite registration material fully sets, the complex is removed and replaced back on the cast, where it can be used to remount the cast. Now let's explore how to mount a case that has no remaining occlusal stops. In a case like this, the patient has no occlusal stops, has a loss of vertical dimension of occlusion, and a collapsed facial appearance. The first step is to re-establish lost vertical dimension with a record base and wax rim. Notice how the facial appearance is restored when the vertical dimension is restored. The next step is to position the patient in CR in preparation for the CR record. If a patient is simply asked to open, the patient will not be in CR because the condyles would have slid down the glenoid fossa. It is therefore the duty of the practitioner to guide the patient into CR where the condyles would be in the superiormost anteriormost positions in the glenoid fossa. Multiple techniques have been described to do this, including chin point guidance, bimanual guidance, a leaf gauge, a repositioning device, or asking the patient to move their tongue to the roof of their mouth. Once the patient has reached CR, the occlusal registration material is put onto the record base. The patient is then instructed to bite down into the occlusal registration material enough to make indentations in the material. It is recommended that the patients not fully close to prevent any possible movement of the record base. Once the material is set, we can go back to our articulator where the maxillary arch is mounted using a face bow record. To compensate for the open position during CR records, it is often indicated to prop the articulator open to compensate for that distance. Once the stone has set, the occlusal registration material can be removed and the pin can be dropped back down. 
Now you'd have mounted casts that represent the vertical height determined during the patient's appointment. That was it for this video. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.